Today I'm going to show you a few different methods of how to create a sketch render out of Archicad. Um, if we, once we've created our 3D window, I've saved this as a saved view. This is a perspective view, and we can move this around. And the point of a saved view is once it's saved, we can always move it around and make any changes. And then all we need to do is click, and it will take us straight back to that setting. It'll also have other settings in this saved view regarding the, the light, so where the sun's coming from. We can see the shadows are being cast here behind these columns. And the other thing that it will save is actually the render settings as well. So let's look at my standard settings. When we go to Creative Imaging, sorry, Document, Creative Imaging, Photo Render Settings, There's a couple different engines that we can use. Basic Renderer, which I never use anymore, Cine Render, and Sketch. The, the Cine Render and the Sketch are available in the, the full Archicad version and the Education version. I'm going to use the Sketch now and just show you some of the settings that I use. I find that the Sketch only works well when we have a very, very high resolution. So you see I've added a lot of pixels in here. If the resolution's too low, it just looks, I guess, too sketchy. So this helps it to have a bit of a, a hand-drawn feel, uh, but still make it look quite professional. So the main option that I use is pen cut. Everything else is customized. We don't need to show 3D vectorial hatching, sun shadows, or transparency. And what I would recommend that you do is start by not showing any of those. That'll make it render a lot faster as well. And then once you've got the base um, view, base sketch, base render working for you, then you can start to add these in one at a time. And I'll show you a reason why I actually add them in one at a time. When we go to enhancements, I tend to turn those all off. Sketch line settings, I leave thickness at 50%. Everything else is at zero. Hatch line setting, 20. Everything else at zero. So all of these things that I've got zero make it more sketchy effectively. Um, thickness 100%, darkness 10%, that's for the shadow. And then background, I like my background color just to be white, but of course there's a few different options of how that can work out. Now once we've got all those settings right, again, I'm going to leave these all off for now. The preview window doesn't work in a sketch render, so this works really well for our cine render engine, uh, but not for our sketch render, so don't even worry about doing a uh, a preview, just jump straight in to do the photo render. I turn this off just because it's in the way. Document, creative imaging, photo render projection. Now even though I'm using very very large pixel based image, uh, because it's quite simple I also don't put complex um, views, complex elements, uh, people, vehicles, plants, these all take a very 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 long time to render. They don't make your drawings look better turn them off, model it, and then add it in in something like Photoshop if you want to, which is what I'm going to show you next. Not that visualization, but some extra techniques. So here we see the basic sketch render, and what makes it sketchy, if you like, I could maybe zoom in a bit, is the lines are a little bit distorted deliberately. The, um, the lines don't meet in some places and there's a bit of a, a differentiation in the thickness of lines. So that all helps it to look a little bit more real, a bit more believable, or, or we could say a little bit more hand-drawn. Now we can start to save these. Uh, the way that I save these is it, save them externally. So if I'll save as, save it just as a file into the folder, and I save it as a TIFF. Now when we want to add on additional settings, photo render settings. We can, like I said, turn these on all of them or we can turn on one at a time. What I would generally do is turn them on one at a time. So let's turn vectoral hatching on. Let's re-render this. So you see it's actually not going to re-render but it's actually creating a new render so I can flick through them at any time. All the settings will be the same, except it's now added vector hatching. In this particular project, I have a lot of vector hatching. So I've got hatching on the roof, hatching on the wall as cladding, um, the doors, the garage doors are quite complex, and the 
columns have a stone cladding on it as well. So there's a lot of vectorial hatching and sometimes that can be overwhelming. And this is again the reason why I do them all independently. And I'll show you this later. Let's turn that one off now. Let's turn on just the vectorial sun shadows render. I could also go down here rather than going document, creative imaging, photo render projection, I could also press this button. So what defines these sun shadows while this is taking? We see a little bit longer. We've got sun shadows here turned on, down under where it says shadow line settings. That's the, the quality or the depth or the um, density of the line. And if we're wondering where we get the angle of the sun shadows, that's defined from our 3D view options. 3D projection settings, where we can either move that sun manually change it here manually or we can go into our settings and change the time of day in which we're viewing it as well. So let's save this, file save as, again save it as a TIFF and then finally let's do our last one with transparency So that worked quite quickly. Uh, we see that uh, when I have transparency turned on without shadows, the windows become empty so we can see through them, uh, but they're quite light, there's no shadow. What we can also do is turn the sun shadows on and the transparency, and when we do this, the windows become dark. Now the point of all this is that we end up with multiple views, multiple renders, one, two, three, four, five. We're going to save them as independent individual images. There we go. So we can see that the, the shadow inside is even darker um, with the transparency turned on. Once we've saved them all, again, file, save as, we can place them or open them up in Photoshop. This is one that I made before. Let's just go to this setting. So here we can save these one at a time. So let's make up a new folder and we'll call it sketch uh, layers. So we'll call this one Um, shadow clear, clear being transparent. Then we can close that one. File save as shadow. File save as. <laughs> I got the name wrong. Um, that last one was supposed to be clear. I'll call this shadow two, and then I'll change that later. So the one that's called shadow is supposed to be clear, not shadow. This is vector or hatch. And finally, I'll just call this one 
outline. In the next video I'll show you how to set these up or open these up in Photoshop and how we can overlay them and then create some interesting effects.